roughly speaking, we had very limited examples from about when we actually started properly looking at this in about October 2014, so seven years ago. We realized that we weren't, we weren't really doing anything particularly visual. We were incorporating a few graphics into publications and things like that, but it was nothing extraordinary. A lot of these things can be generated much, much more easily than they, than they were at the time, like tree maps is a common feature in Excel now, but it wasn't at the time. But it was fairly limited in what we were doing. One exception was this budget chart, which members still have, although it's hopelessly out of date, but they still have on the back of their, back of their door. Big change, the big catalyst factor was very much there was, there was, we kind of summarized into there's four different elements to this. So these are the motivational factors about why we actually went down this route um, in terms of developing in-house capacity to produce data visualization outputs or at the time static graphics. So new entrants and staff post civil service freeze, a lot of the younger staff, graduate level staff came in with various different um, newer skills. Infographics obviously represent best practice. There was a there was a huge boon. Um, a lot of parliamentary research services were using them. They had a lot of tracking resources, a lot of things like economic indicators, publications you'll be familiar with, or the like the environmental indicators that Shane mentioned in CSO. A lot of a lot of different services were doing that as an information resource for members. The key point is they address information overload. They're engaging. Obviously, here everyone's competing for the attention of of a member and members is have, having to devote time um, or portion time very carefully when it comes to their day-to-day -day and their parliamentary duties just generally and the committee duties um, more specifically. Um, but more importantly as well, they, they provide comprehensive and analytic information. And this is, this is more obvious now, it's accessible, it's customizable, and it's a better vehicle just generally speaking for getting your, res your research to the right people in the right way maintaining that level of attention, but also getting your key messages across uh, in an impactful sense. Just to mention very briefly how, what we did. So we, we, we had an external tender. We produced one, we produced one infographic with Fuse graphic designs. So we, we did a tender with them in October 2014, and they designed this, but we worked with the concept conceptualization stages with them, and we had a, a tabular format for the, for the data itself. Uh, for the information but you'll see this is actually the, the key point i'll mention it later is that this is this is a process more so than it's data and that's important because it's it's not just about data it's not just this is not just a, something that economists and social scientists like to do it's very much a broader and uh, broad broader church broader church than that from that though so that was done externally from that we said well can we do this internally is there a way we can incorporate some of the lessons from the tendering process and the meetings that we had, many meetings, um, the conceptualization, the drafting, the final iterations, working through them, that we can actually incorporate into our, into our own um, uh, approach to how we do these things, or can we do these? So I did this, Shannon Electro, another complicated process to go along with the budget process. Um, and we, I did a Microsoft Word just, an example, just as a proof of concept, and it worked very well. It was, it's possible to do. It proved that it was possible to do. It's, it's not the easiest in Word now, but it's, it, it's clearly possible. Again, it requires a bit, of, um, uh, a bit of dexterity when it comes to just learning how, to, how best to replicate a complicated process in this way. But this was a lot of information. We have been seeing a lot of queries on, on prior to this on the process, and we, we still are. Um, but it was something that was kind of very obviously kind of needed needed to be addressed in a more visual, comprehensive way, and this was our result. So we went off and we did a feasibility report on thought of that. And basically, the feasibility report was late twenty fifteen. So we agreed two things, and this sounds quite obvious, but it, it, it was um, the important thing here was to agree first of all the approach. How we were going to do this? Were we going to have a tendering approach where every time we wanted something, we were going to go out and tender for it, which is itself very, you know, time intensive? Or were we going to try it ourselves? And if we were going to try it ourselves, we're we going to have a dedicated team to do this. Or we're we going to have a small group of three or four people who actually produce these, and then you know, other staff just kind of, you know, slap a page on your desk and say, okay, there you go, you produce an infographic on that. And we said, no, that, that's not ideal either because that creates a natural bottleneck, which is obviously both something we all want to avoid considering the small staff small um, core of the staff that we have. So we agreed there won't be specialist staff to be all staff approach. 
all skills very evenly, all training and, and support that would provide would provide to everyone equally. There would be a small advisory team to kind of direct things, um, but that was more just kind of to to join the dots together to make sure that everyone, all the, everyone's needs were, were were properly managed. The software is another thing because having gone through the the, the various stages for the feasibility report, which involved contacting other parliaments, a lot of parliament, every parliament was using something different. We didn't want to use the more paid approaches because what you do is a lot of them have um, uh, an inclination towards using the Adobe suite. The Adobe suite is very expensive for licensing and otherwise. So we said, well, clearly there's a way we use Word for one. So I think publisher could do it. More recently, PowerPoint is the same thing. PowerPoint and Excel work very well. So um, I'll show examples just uh, in, in a short while about how, how they work together. And then the noun project will address in terms of the uh, the uniformity in terms of the icons that you import into these, uh, which is a fantastic resource. As I said, very cost effective resource and very well, well worth the time. And then the supports, so there'll be one to one desk based one, which, uh, which chart guide. So that would basically lay out, you know, what are you trying to, what are you actually trying to visualize? Have a look through this. There was, there was there's many different iterations of this. This has changed over time. And now there's a plethora of hundreds of websites that do all these sort of things a lot of the charts and things that you can download very very easily and two how-to guides more importantly two how-to guides that would basically staff would be able to pick up and use um or peruse and ultimately use the software uh quickly and these were these which i'll provide to you uh, as well uh later um infographics is more just the the universe in which we're operating in what these are what they're intended to do but then there was the tool for the nuts and bolts, as I said, for the for the actual tool itself, like this is how you use it. So we crafted this very carefully to remove the intimidation factor to make sure that any see there's a multitude of, of abilities, a very wide level of abilities. Some have basically admitted very very early on they have no ability to do this. They don't think visually. They're not able to do. It. But so we set this out with everyone in mind, broad range of abilities. And the publisher manual then is something that we we updated over time. Just to mention the inspiration, this is this is quite obvious. To more recently, it's obvious because you can get inspiration from any source, really. But then, at the time, I think a lot of Google search of, a, of certain things will, will will get you there in terms of your. Um, you, know, you think you're terrible, clever, but oftentimes someone else has come up with something that's quite useful in terms, especially in terms of something like we did, which I saw an example is the legislative process. Obviously, another service is most likely to have done something like that, so you can kind of repurpose what's been done already, or you can just borrow the concept itself and. And kind of it'll it'll give you a bit of insight into how to structure something. Various different other things like Canva, Pinterest, information, beautiful. There's many different things. For us, because we're parliamentary researchers, obviously the best source was our other parliamentary researchers, so other parliamentary research colleagues. So this is the European Parliamentary Research Service, and the House of Commons. We have a very close working relationship with these islands, the legislatures in these islands, particularly the House of Commons and uh, the Scottish Parliament. Um, so it's very useful. So, but basically that helps, and that was an, a new initiative as well, um, in terms of our visualization collaboration. So we actually established a subgroup of an, of an existing exchange, which was very more an annual kind of meeting that we had, and that's where the subgroup for visualization came from, which I'm currently chair of. Um, to give you some examples, so as I said. The first few that we did were very much testing a, a very rough template and we're just basically landing things on a page and seeing how it works and then working back with the subject matter specialist um, or else they drafted it we worked with them so there was a kind of a, a give and take relationship there so but as i said there's two there's two different ways to there's, there's two different products ultimately um, and the idea is that there's a process graphic and there's data graphics the data graphics are more familiar and people think they're more relevant for economics, but not necessarily. Um, but here are some examples of, of ones we had done. So very visually appealing, very accessible, great commentary on social media. Um, and I should mention up the top, it says there that we've done basically 199. I didn't say 200 because I'm not rounding it up because I'm actually I'm accounting for these very carefully rather than just rounding up for the sake of it. But um, 199 since, since October 2014, which is about 30 a year. The, the point about templates, though, I think is quite important because, as you see on the left in this graphic, economic indicators were the first thing we did. We had a commentary publication that was about 12 to 15 pages, which would probably be comparable to, um, say, a research paper 
um, that we provided for Yoti or, or just a general research paper that we, we would have been uh, providing to members as, uh, as, a briefing, as a briefing document. But there was this kind of duplication of effort, there was a duplication of commentary, and it didn't seem very useful to do the same thing. Again, like CSO says this, um, you know, the EPA says this, um, or, or, you know, and the, the, the pensions authority says, like it was kind of, it, it was not really necessary because the members like to know there's multiple sources available, but they didn't necessarily need to read all the commentary through your words, and that it's the same commentary through some, uh, as someone else has already provided. So we said, well, let's compile it in a visual format. So we did in 2016, and we produced this uh, on the left there. But the really important thing is you get great mileage out, mileage out of these because you have your template. It's easily replicatable. So you say, right, well, we said, well, there's more topics that we'd like to do in this format. So using that exact same template, which I said is published, as I said earlier, is published in PowerPoint, with Excel graphs, literally import the Excel graph into the document, you structure it, you lay out your text, very straightforward. We built the Education in Ireland um, snapshot there, which is also very powerful, very successful, um, unfortunately. Um, we'd also build the COVID in Ireland um, uh, snapshot, same as, using the same template. More recently, probably more relevant, particularly relevant for the topic of, uh, of, of Yoshi 2020, um, 2022, is the environmental indicators. So again, very successful. Goes through the subject specialists, and they all kind of settle on, on, the, uh, on the modules that would be in, in, this, in this publication. And it's really will be, um, so there are the visuals that you see there. I'll just go briefly through our interactive journey, because that's quite a useful one as well. So interactives are fairly new. Um, we have done different things since about 2014, but more recently in March 2020, 2020, because COVID presented a somewhat serendipitous opportunity for us to engage with these more um, online tools. So Flourish is a tool that's completely online. It's in your browser. You might have heard of it. It's, it's in your browser. You don't download anything. You just log in, uh, create a free account, and you can produce a very, I don't like to say slide deck, but it is quite, it's quite PowerPointy. Um, but it's, it's visual, it's interactive. It's very, there's, there's great options in terms of how you, uh, the, the kind of charts, the kind of visuals you can provide. There are, you can add a narrative, building upon what Kevin was saying earlier, you can build a very strong narrative, very interesting narrative. You can add annotations, it's so flexible, so, so powerful and very succinct. Great tool, and we use it for the COVID date, and we use it to great effect. Just to mention then. Sorry, Darren, I yes. might just mention there, just uh, we're uh, under a, a little bit of time pressure, so we might just um, we might just say that uh, if, if there is maybe the, the last couple of bits you wanted to mention there, but we will be making your slides available after today for everyone. So No um, problem at all. No problem that, okay. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just there. there. I'm just there, if I can just get a few seconds. That's perfect. Thanks, Manny Darren. Not at all, not at all. There are some examples just as well. As I said, there'll be more. Um, the more important thing is to look at today's visualization portal. You'll see examples of what we have. And there is a reference manual as well, more importantly, that you'll be able to access. This is just, there's a lot here, but this is the last slide. I just thought in terms of specific to Yoshi, there'd be some interesting things to say, just in terms of the bottom there. So. It gives students that opportunity. I think using this sort of method that clearly it's, it's, it's possible to do this sort of thing for non-specialists to use it and non-specialists to pick it up quickly. Um, creative and showcase the work, fantastic opportunity to do that. has been very impactful and successful for us. And um, gets to the point, underscores the importance of understanding your audience requirements and scoping the research. So that might impact how you actually scope your research in the, in, in the beginning. Um, but it teaches, students as well about big data and multiple sources the idea of the intuitive narrative around their around their research as they say but also synthesizing interpreting co complex data and the big point is thinking visually about memorable research something that will stand out something that you're interested in you'll be able to do it in this way and it, it, it's something that you can kind of look at and it looks very neat and tidy something that we public as well that you'll be able to promote yourself and it always works well on social media um, and just last point, it's increasingly desirable essential requirements in the profession as an economist and as a social scientist. So something if you can do initially, if you can start when you're a student and you're leaving cert um, in the senior cycle, the junior or senior cycle, it's really powerful and really, uh, really, really useful thing to develop over time.
So there we are, and there's my contact details. I said it'll be uploaded on the on the uh, on the on the website as well, so you'll be able to access that. But thank you very much.